Hey everyone, it's Alex with Lover Fighter Writer, and I'm joined today by a special guest named Paul Mapleston, who is a freelance writer and has a lot of uh, really great experience to share with us. Uh, I know it's going to be really beneficial for you, so I want to uh, get right into it. Paul, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Alex. Pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, so the first question that I have for you is uh, just related to how long you've been in the industry. Uh, how long have you been uh, a freelance writer? Uh, I started freelance writing in around January 2016. So uh, coming up to six years now. Um, previous to that, I was running a freelance business, though not specifically focusing on writing. Uh, my wife is a freelance editor, so I had some experience with that. She's been doing that for probably about 10 years now. And so it seemed a natural step to go from there into freelance writing. Uh, and I had the opportunity to do so, uh, as I say, early in 2016. And uh, since then, I've been building up my client base and uh, I've been working full time as a freelance writer for, yeah, uh, about five years now. So sort of like 27, early 2017 is really when I was able to go full time with it. Nice. Uh, that's, uh, that's really awesome. So, uh, I know that you have a pretty particular client base. Uh, would you like to talk about the types of clients that you work with and why? Sure. Yeah. So I'm specifically a business to business uh, freelance content writer. Um, so that generally tends to mean that I'm writing a lot in the business, finance and technology area. Uh, and it's specifically for content marketing. So it's basically it's writing articles and blogs to uh, highlight the products and services that are client is putting forward or it's answering questions that their customers might have all with the idea of building trust in the company that hires me as a voice of authority um, so it's all about building up their expertise helping their clients understand how they solve problems um, and really just like trying to build that trust between the client that hires me and their end customer uh, so that's really what most of my work is based around it's uh, primarily informative and educational content um, and it's really sort of designed to like bridge that gap between uh, the technology and products and services that the client offers and then turning them into things that the customer can understand so you know telling them how they might solve their problems uh, how you know their life will be improved as a result of using their their products. Yeah, uh, thank you. That's a really good uh, explanation, and I think that you touched on something really important there, which uh, sometimes there's a bit of a disconnect when people are very new to content marketing uh, that they don't necessarily immediately understand that uh, there needs to be a connection between the content that you're creating and the end result, right? Yes. Yes. So basically, so what you're thinking about is it's always very important to put yourself in the shoes of the eventual end reader. You're writing content for a client, but what you're really writing for is the customers that are going to read that content wherever it's published. So it's very, very important to get that audience perspective bang on. Now, a client will have various ways of telling you what that uh, audience perspective is. Um, a lot of clients will use something called marketing personas and ideal customers. Um, so basically, as part of the onboarding process of talking to a client when you want to work with them, that's going to be one of the questions that you ask them. So you're going to be talking to them about what the target of the content is, who their readers are, what the brand is that you're trying to get across, what the unique selling points are. And that all helps you to build up an idea of who you are going to be writing for eventually. And then that helps you create content that has the right approach, tone, style and voice so that the readers can immediately connect with it because then that helps them connect with the client that you're working for. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So you, you kind of answered my next question there, which was going to be about uh, the services that you offer. Um, how did I, you... I mean, I, 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 I'm happy to dig into that a little bit more if that'd be helpful. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, so really the, the services that I offer and I'm not unique in this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, specifically a freelance content marketer and there are a lot of other people that do very very similar stuff to this i might have a slightly different approach to it but effectively what we're really all trying to do is to build authority okay and that means creating articles blog posts white papers similar written collateral um, with the sole purpose of being to inform and educate 
those end users. And then really, again, to, to identify what problems those end users have and then how those problems can actually be solved. And that really comes from uh, taking what can be quite complex and dry subject matters that the client might come to you with and then really thinking from the client from the end customer's perspective what's in it for me so what you're really trying to do is you're 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 trying to take this idea of the topics that a client might provide you with and then work out why it matters and that's really where a lot of the expertise of a good content marketer will come in is that it's not just writing about you know trends happening in the supply chain industry or uh you know here's how my SaaS startup is going to revolutionize your life it's actually thinking about okay well those trends in the supply chain industry what does that mean to the end customers well it means that they might need to start planning for those things to start coming in so you need to break it down actually tell them what the impact of those trends is going to be so they can then read it through and say oh okay this person clearly knows what they're talking about these are things that i need to be planning for longer term and the client company is somebody that might be able to help me do that therefore i'm going to get in touch with them and get them and, and, and purchase their products and services. So that's really what it is, is taking these fairly complex esoteric subjects and, and making them relevant and understandable. You know, we've all got very short attention spans. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do really is to break it down into easily digestible chunks that someone could just like scan very quickly through the content and really just pull out those, those like maybe four or five sentences from a 1200 word piece, the stuff that's really gonna matter to them. And then what you're also doing through building a content strategy, because obviously you're working with a client hopefully over a long period of time. The idea is, is that you, you build trust in that brand through creating lots and lots and lots of content around similarly themed stuff. So you can do lots of interlinking. So that then makes them a trusted resource for the end customer. And when you do that, that does things like improves the SEO, it improves the trust between the customer and the client. And therefore that leads to them purchasing products and services, which ultimately is what my job is to encourage. All right, thank you. Um, really, really well-rounded answer. Um, so, how did you how did you actually get started? I guess you touched on this earlier, but uh, do you want to go into a bit more about how you got started? Sure. Yeah. So, I actually have a background in communications management. So, uh, as you can hear, I'm from the UK. I live in the US now, but when I was in the UK, um, I was working as an internal communications manager for a large uh, uh, healthcare company. And so I was specifically working in the uh, information technology area about things like uh, the new technology that was coming out, how it would impact on our employees, um, the training they needed to do and all that sort of thing. So that gave me a good under, understanding of, of really the, the, the impact that technology can have and how people need to change as a result. And that really sort of informed a lot of the writing that I now do. So. Um, I, I left that particular role, I moved to the US, and then a couple of years later, I started up my writing business. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that it, was, it was really just a natural, it was really just a natural step on from there. But one of the things that I thought was really important to do early on, and this is actually one of the things that I would like to emphasize to your listeners, is the importance of knowing what you're good at. So freelance writers freelance content writers we cannot do everything well we can just do a very few things really well and success as a freelance writer comes from identifying where those strengths are you know that's why i only focus on business finance and technology because they're the three topics that i really do understand well even if i don't know the nuances of a particular subtopic within that i know enough about the broader context of it that i can do the research fairly quickly get up to speed and hopefully provide a high quality result for my clients so a lot of that starting out as a freelance writer is about figuring out what you're good at it's about trying out different things not overly committing to each one but really seeing where they resonate with you and understanding how you can actually add value to a client through uh through that process um so yeah so there's a lot of like testing experimentation seeing what clients react to uh the sorts of um content and portfolio examples you'll build that really starts even before day one 
you'll be doing a lot of figuring it out as you go but actually at those very initial stages you do need to like take a look think about okay where are my interests where's my skill set that stuff can all change but it's actually very helpful just to sort of gradually build out from those to begin with so you can actually develop a solid foundation for your future work awesome thank you uh, that's uh, gonna be really helpful for a lot of people I think um, and you kind of actually bridged into my next question there, which is, uh, what are the keys to your success as a freelance writer? So I think the number one thing is, is that I'm not just a writer. I'm not just here to create content. What I'm really here for is to provide value to my client. I'm not selling written content. I'm selling solving a problem. I'm selling positioning them with their customers. I'm selling the experience and expertise that I've managed to build up over the last few years and really being able to interpret what they're asking of me and turning it into content that resonates with the people that are going to be reading it. So I kind of approach, I, I kind of see my success as answering the question, what's my client's problem and how do I solve it? Rather than I'm going to just create content based on what they tell me to do, it's actually going a step further than that. And it's saying, okay, what's the purpose of this content? Why are they trying to do this? What are the key points that they're trying to get across? What, are their, what is their audience interested in? So that's not just paying for content. It's actually then buying a complete, reliable, hassle-free, end-to-end service that just tries to go that little bit further. Another key to success as well is having confidence. So that goes back to what I was saying earlier about knowing where your strengths are, because when you know where your strengths are, that really helps to build your confidence as a writer, um, as a, you know, as a consultant, which is, you know, a lot of what we're doing is we're try really trying to like guide clients through that process, suggest to them how they might want to do things, asking questions, pushing back a little bit if we need to, working through a review and feedback process. And that confidence comes through being honest and authentic and understanding that you're a collaborator with the client. They're not telling you what to do. They're basically employing you as a partner. You know, they, you're, you both want the same thing. You're both really trying to get eyes on that content and you're trying to get them, get that content to be helpful and for that content to then drive a specific action from the person that's reading it. So whether that's getting in touch with the client, taking on a trial period for some software or something along those lines. And yeah, I think that, you know, that's that's probably most of where, where that sort of success comes from is really is just taking that step further and, uh, and thinking about the greater context and how it fits into the overall picture of what the client wants to do. Absolutely. Uh, I think that, I mean, you touched on a lot of good points there, but there's two things that you said that I think can apply to most businesses, especially like in a business to business context. And that is the idea that you're solving a problem and the idea that you are partnering with the client. You're not like an employee of theirs. Um, so I think that, uh, yeah, that's, that's really good. And I just wanted to kind of highlight those uh, for anyone who might be getting started out there. Yeah, and I can actually speak a little bit more about that partnering and collaboration thing, because I think that's something something that often that, that can get overlooked. People just like want to jump into freelance writing. They think it's a way to riches. It's not, at least to begin with. It can be later on if you're good at what you do and you can find the confidence and, you, and, and the uniqueness of what you do. But that collaboration part is something that is often not necessarily ignored, but it's not as obvious as it might be. And that's the everything that you do with a client is a two-way conversation they're expecting you to be the expert that's why they're hiring you certainly if you get into like higher end freelance writing services they're expecting you to have the experience knowledge and the expertise and that means that you can absolutely feed back to them on things that might not work or things that maybe they could tweak to be a little bit better or uh uh, you know, th th this idea that you know what you're talking about. And of course, you need to get to a point where you do know what you're talking about. But once you get there, writing becomes a very two-way collaborative process. You know, that goes from the initial communications and maybe making suggestions about ideal formats for content or topics they might want to cover through to 
things like contract negotiations and payments and invoicing and it also goes to things like you know keeping them informed of stuff and professionalism so it all really just links together into this idea of we're working together you're not telling me what to do we're 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 basically doing it in a collaborative way absolutely yeah um, and so you 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 did talk a little bit just now about uh, about people kind of you know, beginners getting started. Um, would you like to dig into that a little bit more? Sure. Yeah. So I think that there's a few you know there's a few fun. To, so um, I help to run the freelance writers subreddit. So I would encourage your listeners to go along there. It's on Reddit. Just search for freelance writers. And, and join. And I'm one of the expert contributors there and I help to, I create the wiki there, uh, which is a, like FAQs covering a lot of different aspects of freelance writing. And so one of the questions that we're very often asked is, how do I get started? How do I set myself apart? What on earth do I need to be doing and stuff like that? So through being involved in a lot of those conversations, you know, there are a few things that we generally tend to recommend to beginners to really like just get them off the ground. And the first thing that we would generally say to people is specialize. So this is really about finding a niche or a niche. I don't, I'll I'll use niche because that's that's my preferred pronunciation, but niche, niche, same thing. So specializing is really, really important, mainly because as a generalist writer, you're not going to have a deep enough insight into specific fields to be able to uh, build your expertise and you know, good word of mouth and good SEO and stuff like that. Um, you're not gonna have the, the depth of knowledge um, to provide convincing articles and you're not gonna be able to charge rates that are as high because generalist writers, there's too much, there's, you know, there's a lot of supply and not a huge amount of demand. The more you specialize, the fewer writers can actually write in those particular areas, but there are still a lot of clients wanting it. And so therefore the laws of supply and demand mean that you can charge more and there's generally more work available. So making a name for yourself in a specific niche is really good. It helps you to develop your expertise, show experience through your examples and all that sort of thing. And the thing about niches is that they can be anything. They could be anything from like vitamin supplements to celebrity gossip to supply chain management to fintech or and, and stuff like that this is a generalization and it doesn't always hold true but in my experience i found that the more quote unquote boring and dry that a niche is the more you can earn writing about it so lots and lots and lots of people write about celebrities and reality shows and exercise and fitness and, and all these sort of, and, uh, and entertainment and all these different kinds of topics because there's a huge amount of people that do that prices are low you know clients have got tens of thousands of writers they could choose from to, to do the work as you specialize though as you get into those sort of like drier areas um you can really start to excel you know all of your work can be based around these particular things. And I'll come on to portfolio examples in a minute, but they're really the bread and butter for a freelance writer. So they're great portfolio examples. And so when you get into a niche, you can actually build samples specifically for, um, for, for that particular specialization. Sometimes that only happens, you know, a lot of writers start with more general topics. They don't really know what they're going to go into. But then as they continue to write, they'll find out that they have a knack for, uh, for, for specific topics and, and niches. And so you can actually specialize as you go along. And as you get into those subtopics, you can then build up your authority in those particular fields. I'd also say this as well is that generally speaking, business to business niches pay better than business to consumer ones. Um, business clients are generally higher ticket purchases. Um, so that typically means that A person marketing to business clients will have a bigger marketing budget because they don't need to convert quite as much in order to be able to make their money back. And so typically speaking, business to business writing tends to be a little bit better paid. So in those cases, you know, I I would obviously recommend specializing in B2B writing. And if if you've got a natural talent for that, then that's a good way to go. Leading on from that, the second thing about where to start is create great writing examples and build a portfolio. Um, ideally, those would be based around the niche that you choose. 
But portfolio examples are really everything for a, portfolio, for a freelance writer. They help you to attract clients in your niche. They demonstrate that you can do great work because you've already got stuff that's published online that you can link to. Um, and they're really what set you apart from other writers. So it's really important to make sure they're as good as they can possibly be. Start developing examples and your portfolio early. You don't need to, um, you know, you don't need clients to actually start writing examples. It's perfectly fine to publish on Medium. That's a that's a great place to start. Or, you know, just set up a WordPress blog and start publishing stuff there. Effectively, all you're doing, though, is, is you're trying to get stuff out there into the open. Once it's available online, you can then link to it when you're doing things like applying for jobs or pitching and stuff like that just to show examples of your previous work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one of the other things here I would say about portfolios is that it's important to get permission from a client to be able to link to the work. So if you start on a writing platform like Upwork or any of the other one or Fiverr Pro or any of the other ones that are out there, you won't generally have permission to use those examples. You know, they, they, that's just generally part of the terms and conditions. If you uh, have your own contracts, then, for example, one of the things that I do is I actually have a clause in my contract that states the writer may link to any, you know, publicly published work, bylined or not, et cetera, et cetera, has a couple of other things in there. That basically tells the client, I'm going to link to this unless you ask me not to. And if they do ask you not to, then I won't link to it. But, you know, that's that's just a way for me to actually having to get around having to ask each individual client for permission. Um, but certainly if you've not got a clause like that in your contract, then it's perfectly fine to write to a client and just say, hey, you know, um, we've done this work together. I'd like to be able to link to it. Um, I'll make it clear that it's for you. Um, and, and, you know, some clients will say no, but some will say yes. You know, links from a blog is good for SEO and stuff like that. So it can be a win-win situation. But yeah, focusing on those uh, on those portfolio examples to begin with is, is really, really important. And I'd say you can write them yourselves or you can link to published work provided you've got permission to do so. And the third thing that I would say is really important for uh, beginners is don't get put off too soon. You need to be able to persevere. Freelance writing is not overnight riches at all, despite what all the courses tell you and they promise you can be earning thousands of dollars a month and stuff like that. Yeah, eventually you might, you know, particularly if you can specialize, you've got good samples, you can attract the right kinds of clients, you can add value for them. It's a lucrative career. But in those early stages, it's tough to get started. So what I would say is that, you know, do try and persevere through those first few months. Um, make sure you've got some savings behind you so that, you know, you're not living hand to mouth. Uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, really just like stick at it. Join communities. Listen to podcasts like this. Um, ask questions. Seek, seek out resources. There are lots and lots and lots of us that have been through this and we want to help other writers be successful as well. So, you know, I'm just saying that there is the support there, but a lot of it does come down to your attitude and your resilience and your ability to persevere. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And uh, you're kind of talking about, uh, I guess, self-education at the end there, which of course is going to be really important uh, ongoing. Uh, what would you say are the most important skills for a writer to have other than writing? So I would actually say there's a lot of other skills which are just as important as writing. So, you know, I, I've kind of, I've touched on a lot of this in the past, which is about the value add, thinking about the bigger questions about how you're going to serve a client and stuff like that. None of that actually has to do with putting words on a page. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's important you're a good writer and that's demonstrated through your examples and all that sort of thing. But a huge amount of it comes down to other skills and I think the main ones are these. So the first thing I'd really say is about professionalism. Um, so that's really about being reliable, being attentive, um, you know, having an approach which is mutually respected, you know, where there's mutual respect between you and the client. They're hiring you as an expert and you appreciate the fact they pay your invoices, you know, so it's a it's meant to be a mutually beneficial relationship. And I think that professionalism comes down to things like always responding to communications promptly. It comes down to uh, meeting deadlines and target dates and all that sort of thing. 
Uh, it's about managing projects through from start to finish and having established ways of, of doing that, like collecting information from the client in the first place, having a review and feedback process and, and all that sort of thing. Um, it's about asking questions if you're not sure. So, you know, one, th one of the things I do find is that new writers try to second guess what a client means because they're not confident enough to go back and say, what do you mean? Mm. And it's totally fine to go back and ask that. It's totally fine to go back and ask those questions. If you're ever not sure, don't guess. You know, go back to the client and just say, uh, I want to, I just want to check. Uh, this is what I understood from what you said, but I just want to check that that is the case. If it's not, please tell me. A client is going to respect that much more than you turning in a half-baked piece of work that doesn't quite hit what they want because you didn't ask the question to clarify in the first place. So asking questions is really, really important. That's also about keeping clients informed. So, for example, you know, I send an email every at the start of every week to clients that I've got ongoing work with, just sort of manage their expectations about, um, you know, the fact that I've received the information that I need from them, when they can expect to have it back, um, you know, and if there's any sort of updates on the work and stuff like that, maybe chasing feedback and, and, and things like that. So that's that's an important part of it as well as being proactive and keeping clients informed. Some of it comes back to what I was saying earlier about pushing back a little bit having suggestions for uh for you know like maybe ways of doing things um things like uh, maybe having templates in place so one of the things that i do is that i have a freelance writer briefing note so that's a standard one page of google doc that i share with all of my clients so if they want to request work they need to fill this out and then what that does is it contains all the important information that I need in order to go and write the content because it's already asking a lot of those questions up front. So, you know, that would be things like obviously things like the title of the piece, the keywords they want me to focus on, um, the tone they want me to use, how long they want the piece to be, um, you know, key points they want me to hit, examples of similar work that might already be published. And that goes a long way to... A, giving them confidence that you understand exactly what they mean, and B, ensuring that I can hit all the right notes when I'm when I'm actually writing the content. Um, you know, there might also be things like, you know, have a freelance writing contract, have a contract you can send to clients. It's important to get contracts signed because then that means everybody's working to a common set of agreed standards around things like, you know, quality of work, payment, invoicing. Um, and, and, you know, all the other stuff that goes into running a professional business. So having a contract is really important. And then really it's about being available and reliable and meeting your promises. So, you know, you're, you're committing to get work back by a certain date. Well, make sure you set aside enough time to do your writing and research prior to that date so you don't miss the deadline. If you are going to miss a deadline, tell the client as soon as you can so that they can manage around it. And, and, and you know, uh, so you, you can basically, again, it's about that collaboration. So that's really the first thing is, is I would say is really important is professionalism. Second thing I think is the ability to research. So a lot of writing is about research. You know, it's about reading up about stuff that's already been published. Um, you know, so I maybe do things like reading trade journals or white papers or, you know, research in, in your particular field. Um, so, you know, a lot of that you'll be doing when you're actually writing the article. You know, you might search for it, open up half a dozen different tabs, read through them, see what really makes sense. You know, copy that into a note taking tool like Evernote or even just a Word doc or something along those lines. So really, that's about the research is about doing a lot of reading, but also it's about knowing how to use Google. So, you know, using long tail keywords to do that research, you know, searching for uh, particularly if it's like up to date stuff, you know, using the tools in Google to search for stuff that's been published in the last month or the last year or a specific time period. So mm -hmm. that you're focusing on t contemporary uh, publications, so using the latest research to inform what you're writing. So, yeah, that that research process, again, is again about the mindset. and again the thing about the research is understanding the audience so when you're writing for that audience you need to be asking the questions where you're doing the research that they're going to be asking because then that will bring back results that you can then um you know you can then interpret and use and 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 really just like build your own ideas and 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 content around so uh professionalism and research the first two next one is software and tools so a lot of 
my success as a writer comes from using the right tools to do my job. In other words, making the administration and the uh, the, the, the really like the day-to-day -day running of my business as simple and easy as possible so I can focus on billable work. Because all the time I spend communicating with clients, raising invoices, doing my bookkeeping is time I'm not getting paid. Mm -hmm. So you want to really make that stuff as easy as possible. So I use a lot of automation. I use a tool called Zapier to like to um, to move stuff between my client relationship management software and my task management software. I keep track of all my clients through uh, through client relationship management. I keep track of all my projects through task management software. All of my invoicing and accounting I handle through a different system. And you know I've got a process that I go through in order to go through that 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 whole sort of thing from that initial briefing note through to getting the information from the client through to entering the details of it getting that in my task management system writing through google docs going through the collaboration process so nailing down that uh the, that software and tools and finding the the combination of technology that works for you is a really really good thing and it's absolutely fine to experiment you know i i tried dozens of different tools before i settled on the particular combination that i have now and actually there was a recent thread in the freelance writer subreddit which talked about the different tools and everybody uses stuff that's different there are no two that the same. i mean yes we all use like google docs and a lot of us use wave accounting and stuff like that because they're easy tools to use but the thing is you need to find out what works for you you don't want to get resistance from the tool itself you don't want to be discouraged from using it so try out trial periods see what works for you and don't be afraid to pay for them you know a lot of the good tools mm -hmm. out there are paid for um and they will save you so much time that they'll pay them for themselves multiple times over in terms of freeing you up for billable hours so yeah i'm a i'm a str really strong believer in investing in good tools to to make you better at what you do uh next skill i'd say was important is uh what i call continual improvement um, so this is really about understanding how you can do things better. So that might go from, uh, you know, that starts the question, what can I do better? How can I work better for this particular client? What is it, you know, if you make a mistake, which we all do, understanding how that came about and putting processes in place to stop it from happening again. So, you know, that again, that's about having the mindset of um, uh, where am I starting? what can i do better and continual improvement isn't just about asking those questions it's about collecting data um it's about analyzing that understanding how well you're doing particular things and it's about making changes and tracking the improvements that you've made again through measuring data so it's a continual process of uh you know like of like asking those questions answering those questions making the changes seeing what the impact is and if the impact is good then you integrate it into your freelance writing process and if it's bad you get rid of it you know uh, some of the some of the changes you make won't be for the best but the ones that are it's this slow like iterative improvement of, of getting better and better um next thing i'd say is confidence um so i've probably talked about this before about having you know i've talked about this before about that confidence of of having that expertise and and, and that sort of thing but the real thing about confidence um is uh, or probably the main thing that your listeners will be interested in is allows you to charge more money. Many clients, many freelance writers rather, undervalue themselves. You know, mm -hmm. they think that they see other people charging one, two, three cents a word, and they think that's all they can charge. All right, you can charge 10, 15, 20 times that if you've got the confidence to do so. And yes, there's obviously a lot of other stuff that goes into it, like expertise and niches and portfolio samples and solving problems and adding value. But, you know, there are a lot of writers out there charging 40, 50 cents a word to do work. And really, the biggest difference is they've got the confidence to ask for it. And because you've actually got the confidence to ask for it, clients that are in that budget range, and there are lots of them, you know, startups are flush with cash from investment. They want to get noticed. They're prepared to pay to get the best content out there. So positioning yourself in a way which says, I'm the expert, I'm confident about that, I've got these strengths, these are demonstrations of what I've done in the past, and it's going to cost you this much to hire me. That's all about having the, the, the confidence to be able to do it and, and, and put that out there. So, you know, that, as I say, that's often the thing that holds a lot of writers back. But, you know, having the, really just having the, the, the strength of your convictions to be able to increase your rates, provided you can meet the value. Yeah, you know, provided you can deliver that value. That's a huge part of, of making a decent living uh, doing this particular career um 
Next thing I'd say, that yeah, just like a couple of final ones to touch on. So next one is about, uh, this isn't really about skills. This is about practicalities. And that's get some savings in place. You know, don't decide to go freelance full time after you've just been, you know, after you've just left a job and you've only got $1,000 in the bank. Right. Nothing is going to stress you out more than having to use today's money to pay yesterday's bills. Now, anxiety is terrible for creativity. And if you can't be creative, you can't be a content writer. Or really, I would argue creative any, of, any, of any real kind. So having some savings in place, you know, like maybe two or three months and stuff like that, breaking into this part time to begin with, you know, maybe maintaining a full time job in the meantime and and doing this on your evenings or weekends or moving out to part time so you still got some income coming in that's all really i think quite important and really just having the financial backing to be able to do that and the last skill i'd say again this isn't a skill at all is luck you know it's it's you can follow all this stuff and you might not get there and that's actually what i'm saying about perseverance is you have to keep trying but mm. uh, you know some of it comes down to luck it's like who googles you who finds you what are your innate strengths to begin with how do you play to those you know lady fortune does play a part in uh, in in success um, obviously we can do whatever we can to maximize our opportunities but some of it will just come down to luck at the end of the day yeah i really like that you brought up luck because i feel like uh, you know, most people who have any degree of success become like really determined about, uh, you know, telling everyone how they did it. And like, you know, it, it's all about this. It's all about this thing that I did. And yeah, I think uh, just being aware that there is an element of luck and that you, you know, you just have to, you, you, even if it's not working right now, you can just keep working at it and it might work in the future as long as mm -hmm. you keep creating new opportunities. And actually I can, I can actually speak to, a point that you just raised there which is about you know if you do it this way you will be successful all right that is rubbish all right mm -hmm. there are there is no one writer there is no one course there is no one way of doing things that's going to work for everyone that's kind of why i said at the beginning it's important to understand where your strengths are because there'll be things that work for you you know there are things that work for me because of my background experience attitude analysis in fact i'm a nerd and you know i love collecting data and continual improvement i've been training all that stuff that works for me because it fits in with my current understanding of the world and business and the value i can add and and, and as an natural extension of that what i can do through content writing but just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone else. Yes, niches and portfolio examples, I think, are important. Yes, I think things like professionalism and, and, and confidence and stuff like that, they're all important. You know, they're, they're reasonably universal. But there is no one set formula that any writer can follow that's going to guarantee them success. You've got to be able to tailor it to your own strengths. Uh, plug your weaknesses and just keep exper experimenting and trying and refining so you can find the ideal business model and set up for, for your own career. Absolutely. So uh, this is a bit more of a specific question here, but uh, how important do you think it is for writers to have a website or a blog? Um, it depends on the writer. So, you know, it, this, this sort of goes back to there's not one way to do things. But generally speaking, I think it is fairly important. So for me, all of my work comes through inbound content marketing. I don't pitch. I don't apply for jobs. Um, mm. You know, I don't do any social media marketing, nothing like that. A hundred percent of my work comes through people finding my website because they've searched for something like supply chain writer or SaaS writer or fintech writer or something like that. My pages come up because obviously I've, I, I wouldn't be much of a content writer if I couldn't if I wasn't good at search engine optimization for my own website um, so you know so that will then come up they'll go through to there they'll read my portfolio examples and then I think okay he's a you know he's a he's someone that, that I can work with um, you know it's got lots of in it's got lots of stuff about my experience my expertise and most importantly my prices so everyone that contacts me already knows exactly how much I'm going to charge them to do the work. So that that acts as a really good filter. Um, and plus it positions me in a certain, a certain tier of writing. 
you know, mm-hmm. so, you know, they're not going to get the, you know, I, I'm, I don't charge like 60 or 70 cents a word. So they're not going to get this ultimate premium stuff. But also, I'm not charging 10 cents or five cents a word. So they know it's going to be, you know, it's like hopefully like fairly mid to high tier. So a website can be really good for managing expectations. So stuff like, um, you know, so yeah, so stuff like, you know, having your portfolio samples on there. Um, having your background on there, your areas of experience, your expertise, your niches, all that kind of stuff is all really, really good for informing the client and building their trust. And that's really what a lot of this comes down to is actually building trust with the client. Can I do what you're asking me to? Well, you know, yes, I can. And here's why. And then you tell them. And most importantly, if you've got the right examples and stuff like that, you show them. You know, so that's why I'm, I'm kind of like I'm a strong believer in in in, in like publishing examples openly and, and keeping everything as transparent as possible. So yeah, I would say that having a website is important for me. But then there's other writers that will just you know they will do everything through LinkedIn marketing or through a platform mm-hmm. like Upwork or Fiverr Pro. And so in those particular cases, having a website isn't as important. You know, on Upwork. You can build up a profile and reputation on there and build reviews and all that sort of thing. And that's great, you know, if that's the way you decide to do it. But just bear in mind, then you're going to be locked into that platform. Yeah, you know, same with Fiverr or Fiverr Pro or any of the other sort of like um, uh, freelance marketplaces that are out there. You know, there are there are good clients on there. There are bad clients. There are good rates. There are bad rates. It's like anything else. You've got to, you've got to see what you're good at. Um, so yeah, so I mean, you don't need a website if you're going to be going through one of those uh, one of those freelance marketplaces, but do bear in mind that if you don't, you're going to get locked in. So the thing is, is that with a freelance website, what you're really doing is is that you're saying it's an open call to everybody that's searching for you. Hey, here I am. I'm available. If you want to work with me, this is what you're going to get. So it's really really helpful from that particular perspective. Um, but yeah, it's only not the only way of doing things. Like for example, I don't really blog. You know, most of my stuff is is static content on my website. It's portfolio samples and and stuff like that. So I haven't really built much of a. I haven't really got people there through a blog, but I've got it through good website copy and landing pages and all that sort of thing, which I've optimized over the over the time that I've been working on the website. But a blog is good for some writers. You know, it, again, it's another way of building trust. So really, it depends upon, again, the business model that you're following, how you're trying to attract clients. But overall, I'd say it's probably, it, you know, it is a good idea. Uh, 100% agree. Um, so the next two questions that I have kind of uh, work together. So maybe I'll, I'll ask them together and you can answer however you see fit. Sure. Um, so what are the best ways for writers to make money online and what are the best ways for writers to find clients online? Okay. So I'm biased. I'm going to say that first of all, is that <laughs> I'm obviously, you know, is that, is that stuff has worked for me. And again, this goes back to just cause it's worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody else. So I'm just speaking yeah. from my own experience here, but you know, for me, the best way for writers to make money is to sell content, you know, um, I'm a I'm a full time writer. I make a you know I make a decent a, a good salary, um, and you know that's all come about purely through content marketing. So, you know that's what works for me. But I'm positioned in a very specific way. You know I'm sort of in that mid to high end, very specialized business to business, informational building authority type of content. There are other ways of doing it, of course. You know, other writers can specialize in things like copywriting. That can be very lucrative if you get in with the right companies and you really build a reputation for yourself. You know, that sort of like persuasive copy. Turns out I'm terrible at that stuff, so I'd never touch it. But a lot of writers make a really good living doing copywriting. You know, again, similarly in things like social media marketing, that can be very lucrative. Writing newsletters, you know, there's lots and lots of different styles of writing that, if you've got the strength to do it, then that's what you should embrace. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, that 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 you know that that's all to say that you need to choose the way that works for you, which goes back to understanding what your strengths are. Um, and also the other thing I'd say about that is try things out and see what works. You, I only found out I was a terrible copywriter when I tried to write copy, and it was terrible. So, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have understood that if I hadn't done it. You know, I've just had a very recent, recent experience where 
I was doing some, trying to do some social media marketing, like first person, very opinionated, and I'm terrible at it. I thought, oh, this sounds like a good idea. This will be fun. I sat down, and I can normally write like a, I can normally write a decent article in a couple of hours. This of like 1,200, 1,500 words or something. This particular article ended up being 250 words, and it took me over an hour to even really get started with it because it just was so outside my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing is, the person that wanted to work with me is brilliant at this stuff. You know, he can turn them out very quickly. He makes good money doing it, etc. So, you know, it, 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 that's again about that experimentation and 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 understanding what works for you. And this is again one of the other things I like about collecting data is that if you can work out where you're getting your money what you did for it like how many words you wrote how long it took you and stuff like that you and you know the niches you're working in and stuff like that you can really begin to then specialize in the things which give you the biggest return on the time that you're investing you know so that's the thing is that try it and see outside direct like selling content or social media or newsletters or copywriting obviously there's other things like you know affiliate marketing and building up authorities and experts so you get paid to do things like attend seminars and conferences and stuff like that. Um, you know, so there's, 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 there's all these other things. So really, you know, there's, there isn't a best way. There's the way that works for you. But I do think there's a worst way. And I'm going to, I just really want to cover this like quite quickly. And that is low end content mills. Mm. So a lot of writers that I see get trapped into a cycle of, uh, you know, of these mills, of going onto these mills and paying like one or two cents a word, which is, mm -hmm. you know, you'd have to work so hard to make a decent living in a, in like the US or the UK or Australia or somewhere like that. You've got to do so many hours. You've got to write so much content and you're still only earning less than minimum wage. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and the problem is, is that these then trap you into this cycle of not building up your confidence. They don't let you communicate directly with the client about the other ways that can help you. They don't let you show value. They're all for, you know, for like low end, low balling clients. So because you don't get the opportunity to really build your expertise, you don't get the opportunity to build your confidence. It's and you don't get the opportunity to build a portfolio because you can't reuse the samples. You get trapped, and that means that and you know, and you know not having that confidence means that you probably haven't got the time or the energy or the will to then break out of it and be successful at something which could pay you a lot more money. So I would say you know wherever possible to try and avoid those really low end content meals. That are, you know just just like one or two cents a word and you have to, you know, generate 20 or 30,000 words a week just to get a living income. So yeah, I just say, you know, those, those are definitely the things to avoid. Um, in terms of like the best ways to find writers, again, there's lots of different ways, you know, you can, I used inbound content marketing, um, but you know, people can apply to freelance jobs. There's a lot of job boards out there. Um, you know, you can, one of one of the tricks that I used early on was that I set up automation so that whenever a job would be posted to any of those job boards like Pro Blogger or uh, Make a Living Writing or anything like that, I would then get an email immediately that job was posted so I could be one of the first people to apply for it. Mm. And often what you find is, is that the, the earlier you do that stuff, the more likely you are to get hired because you know, someone posts on Pro Blogger, they're going to get three or four hundred responses. After reading through ten of them, they're probably going to discard the rest. So being early is actually really, really important. So you know, like building automation around stuff like that can be a great way. And that's actually how I got my first. That's really how I started to build as a freelance writer. Is that I applied to jobs. I paid a lot of attention to what they were asking for. I provided very relevant samples and experience, and I was one of the first few people to apply. And all that stuff together gives you a much higher chance of actually getting those roles. So I'd say, you know, the things like, you know, having those automated emails, I used um, if this, then that, with IFTTT, which is a, a which is a service that can scan RSS feeds of job boards and then emails you when something is posted to it. That's mm. the method that I used, but you know, there may be other things that people can do as well. 
so yeah applying to freelance jobs um, and again you know, making sure that your application is not generic that it's super relevant that you know you've researched the company a little bit before you write to them so one of the things that I'd recommend is that when you're applying to a job look at who the company is that's doing it read through the website look at the blog posts and stuff like that or what's already being written mention that when you're actually applying to them because it helps you stand out from the 95% of other writers that haven't bothered you know if you show that you've actually put a little bit of effort in to begin with that you understand them um, you know uh, like for example one of the things you can do is you can find out who their content marketers are you know the, who manage that process and address them by name you know again this is all stuff that makes a big difference in terms of in terms of getting you ahead of everybody else so yeah do the research before you apply for jobs there's then platforms again like upwork fiverr fiverr pro and stuff like that um you know they could be great ways to find work you know just reiterate the point of stay away from the low value content mills but you know stuff like upwork you can you can find decent clients on there fiverr pro which i was a member of for a little while which is like the uh, that's not regular Fiverr services that's like the next level up that can be a great way to find good clients but even regular Fiverr if you can actually develop a you know if, if you can develop a good profile there and reviews and stuff like that you can start charging more money and getting out of the five dollars for a thousand words kind of thing which is the road to doom um then another way that we've seen people be successful is through um LinkedIn marketing so that can be a really good one as well. You know, LinkedIn is a really versatile platform. Um, you know, you can link to work, uh, to a portfolio directly from there. Um, you know, you can make posts, you can connect with people. Then when people are searching for freelance writers, your profile might come up. So, you know, that can be a, that can be a really good thing as well, but it does require quite a bit of attention. Um, yeah, and, 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 and you, really, you know, really the final one is pitching. So pitching articles to, uh, to online magazines, trade journals, newspapers, publications, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. again, pitching is, is an art form in and of itself. You need to be able to you know, read the style guidelines of what they want, link to other relevant examples, address them by name, come up with a really interesting and engaging article topic. So yeah, so I'd say that you know, those are probably the main ways to do it. And, and, and you know, what I'd say about all of those things, again, is do the research before you apply do the research before you do the marketing because all of that stuff helps you to stand out, which all is good at helping you win the client. Awesome. All right. Well, that's uh, another really, really in-depth and well-rounded answer. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, just as a way of kind of wrapping this up, I wanted to ask you, uh, what are you most excited about for the future of your work? So I think that the bigger thing for me is probably artificial intelligence and mm. AI writing assistance and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of talk on our subreddit at the moment about are, is AI writing going to take away our jobs and stuff like that? You know, is it going to replace us? There's a lot of tools coming out now, um, like Closer's Copy, Jarvis, um, and, and a lot of other tools out there that are doing, you know, they're pretty good. I've used them. You know, I've experimented with them. Um, I've seen the sort of like content they create. It's not enough to replace a high-end writer. It doesn't have the insight and the precision mm -hmm. and the tone of voice. And it, most importantly, it doesn't understand who that client's customers are. And I think that's actually something that's going to be very, very, very hard for AI to replicate. What it will do, though, is it will have a significant impact on the lower end of the market. So, you know, people that are just producing SEO content very quickly, um you know that's sort of like churn and burn kind of stuff a lot of that affiliate marketing stuff it's gonna it's it's really gonna have an impact in that in that end of the market so mm -hmm. i think that writers do need to very carefully consider what is the unique thing that i can bring that stuff like ai can't and the other thing that writers can consider you know all of us is how can ai writing help us that's the other thing is that it's not necessarily just the enemy. You know, my playing around with Jarvis and stuff like that, I found it very useful for a couple of use cases. So I'd never use AI content to write an article for me, but it's great in terms of like helping you to generate ideas or areas you can dig into or maybe highlighting things or, you know, and, and stuff like that or coming up with, uh, you know, it, it, like coming up with a slightly different way of viewing something. So that's the thing is understanding what the tools themselves can do and then, you know, using them for that purpose, actually making them just another part of a writer's toolbox. 
Um, so I think that's the thing is that, you know, is that AI isn't necessarily something you need to fear unless you're in that very sort of cheap space of writing. Instead, it's something you can work alongside. You can make it a part of everything else that you offer. So I think yeah, there's a lot of promise in that particular field and it's something I'm going to be keeping a close eye on. Yeah, same here. Uh, I make a lot of videos about uh, the AI copywriting tools and uh, use them a lot. And I, I agree uh, completely that, uh, you know, it's not the enemy. Uh, it, but it is an excellent opportunity for writers to uh, embrace these kinds of tools as a part of our workflow. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, so that's all my questions. Um, do you have any uh, anywhere that people can find you online uh, if anyone wants to learn more about you? Sure. So um, I create guides for other freelancers. Um, so if you want to, so like, and they, I try to make them like quite in depth and they're all based around questions that freelancers might ask, like, how do I raise an invoice for freelancing? Can I work freelance while I'm employed? You know, so it's, it, again, it's, it's really like trying to get to the thing about you've got a specific question. I'm trying to answer it. So all of that work you'll find on my website, which is called trustworks.guide. Trustworks.guide. Yep. Okay, so awesome. T-R-U-S-T. W O R K S dot guide. Um, the stuff is there. There's not a huge amount of stuff there at the moment. You know, I've been working on it for only a couple of months, so there's only, you know, probably a dozen articles on there. But it's something I'm actively working on, and I really hope it becomes a super useful resource for people to be able to answer very specific questions. Um, the other way I'd say you could find me is join the freelance writer subreddit. Um, I'm on there, I'm an expert contributor. My handle there is Paul underscore Caspian. So feel free to come along there, read our posts, get involved in the community, ask questions, read the wiki. We're happy to help you out. You know, we're we're very much of the opinion that, you know, we all started somewhere. We want to help all freelance writers do this. This is not a competitive place or anything like that. You know, we want to share our knowledge and expertise so that other people can make a living doing what we love. Excellent. All right. Well, those are some awesome resources. I'll be sure to uh, link to those in the uh description or any content area around where I published this interview. Um, so uh, thank you again so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. And I know that a lot of people in my audience are going to get a lot of value from this. I certainly hope so. Yeah. I'm, and, uh, you know, onwards and upwards. It's, uh, it's a great career. And uh, I certainly wish them all well with their exploration into it. All right. Well, thanks, Paul. And uh, you have a good weekend. Thank you.